everyone, I just got home and I thought I would do a little grocery haul. I didn't go to Freshco today, I just went to good old Loblaws. I picked up some grape tomatoes. I am going to be making the goat cheese appetizer again. So of course I picked up some goat cheese. I also grabbed an onion, two clamshells of baby kale. These are 50% off, but they look perfectly fine. And I plan to wilt these or saute them. This is probably one of the only greens that I don't digest very well in its raw form. So I like to cook my kale. Picked up some corn on the cob, a couple of kiwi. I have been craving kiwis lately. These are still a bit hard though. So it's gonna be at least a couple of days before I can eat them. I picked up three packages of frozen shrimp and finally just some plain yogurt. This is the 3.8%. I have a question for you guys. What do you do or how do you store all your fresh produce that doesn't go in the fridge? You might be able to see behind me that I've just put everything kind of all along the counter and I'm not sure what else to do with it. I basically got onions, garlic, and ginger going on here. And then I have oranges, a lemon, and a couple of kiwis. And then I have bananas. Then I have my grape tomatoes and the corn that I just bought. And then I have a little bag of baby potatoes. Don't like to see all of this stuff on the counter, but at the same time, I feel like if I put it in a cupboard, it's gonna be too warm in there. The stuff's gonna spoil and I'm also not going to remember to use the stuff. So at least if it's on the counter, it is top of mind. Do you leave a bowl of oranges somewhere for display and whatnot? But I don't really have room to display that sort of thing. I'd rather just have it all in the kitchen where the food belongs, but I'm not sure how to handle this, especially since We've been trying to eat a lot more fruits and vegetables. We've been buying a lot more and it's been taking up a lot of space on the counter. So let me know how you guys handle this sort of situation. Before I get to my updates, I wanted to talk through the clips at the start of this video. My friend and I went to Early Bird Coffee today for lunch and I had the avocado toast and I also had the blue matcha. The avocado toast was very good, very flavorful. The bread was very difficult to cut through because it was nice and crusty and I only had a butternut to try to like struggle through it but it was fine because it made me eat slower and that slice of avocado toast did end up filling me up whereas typically it wouldn't have but I think it's because I was forced to eat so slowly because I couldn't cut through the bread. The blue matcha on the other hand I could have done without. There was literally no flavor. It just tasted like drinking blue milk. My friend had the flat white and that looked much better. I normally love flat whites, but I haven't been drinking a lot of coffee lately and I just had one the other day from Starbucks decaf, mind you. So I decided to opt for something that was a little bit different on the menu, but it wasn't very good. My friend had the eggs Benny and it came with a beet hollandaise sauce and it looked very good and she said it was delicious. All in all, it was a really nice lunch. It was very nice to catch up with her. I also wanted to mention with the 5 a.m. wake up that I have been doing yoga, light yoga or at at the very least stretching every single morning. Hopefully going forward, you won't hear me say anymore how much I love yoga, that I felt I should do it more, that I didn't know why I wasn't doing it more often because now I am doing yoga every day or some form of it and it just feels great. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I really have been enjoying waking up early. The day feels so long when I wake up early, even though I tend to either take a nap if I plan to sleep late, like tonight I plan to sleep late, so I'm gonna have to squeeze in a nap at some point today. But the day, oddly enough, does feel that much longer and it's been really nice. Similarly, the no processed junk food challenge, I think I will continue that into May as well. I still haven't noticed any trimming up and I still am getting some breakouts, but I feel like my breakouts are a little more surface level and they're not like the um, very deep and very painful cystic acne that I was getting in the past. So I'm gonna keep up with the no processed junk food. I still am going to eat the occasional treat. Like I mentioned, I'm not cutting out sugar and it's not always about making the healthiest choice, but I just don't want to fall down the rabbit hole of buying a lot of junk food and binge eating it at home. At least if I buy a donut or a muffin every once in a while, I'll just eat that and I won't continue eating more or go out and buy more and more and more. Because I'm continuing with the no processed junk food challenge, I'm thinking the next time I do the eat at home challenge, when I blend the two together, it's going to have um, a pretty good impact on my health 
and hopefully on the way I eat going forward. The other thing I wanted to mention, I did an update on the Android phone. I'm not really familiar with Android as it is, but I've been making good use of this one. Everything is different now. The camera function's all different and I find I need to put on a filter in order to get this sort of distance. If I switch it back to the normal camera mode, for some reason it is very zoomed in and I'm not sure why that is. I'm going to play around with the camera a bit more but I wanted to vlog today so I haven't had a chance to fiddle around with the settings. So if the color looks a bit weird or if the picture quality looks a bit weird, that's the reason why. I'm not cooking today because I cooked yesterday and I made this sesame chicken yesterday. Last week I went out with some former colleagues and we went to Jack Astor's and I had their sesame chicken which was delicious so I decided to try to recreate the recipe. My recipe is really nothing like the sesame chicken I had at Jack Astor's. The one at Jack Astor's was a lot more sesame flavored, it was sweeter, it was lighter in color and it wasn't spicy but the one that I made is um, all of those other things so very dark in color spicy, pretty sweet but not overly sweet. I bought the wrong sesame oil last time so the sesame flavor didn't come out as much as I would have wanted because the sesame oil that I currently have isn't as fragrant. It didn't turn out exactly the way I had planned but it was still delicious so I put the recipe in my permanent collection of recipes in a word document that resides on my Dropbox. I don't need to cook but I am going to make some rice and I might make something a little bit later either maybe I could make a lasagna or some pasta or something like that because tomorrow I'm going to be starting my writing class and specifically it's on memoir writing so that's something I kind of wanted to delve into it didn't really matter too much what kind of writing I was leaning towards more non-fiction rather than fiction so I think this class will be very helpful I'm pretty excited for it I'm a little bit shy about my writing as um, I mentioned in my Instagram story but I really do want to learn and improve my writing so I'm going to put myself out there. I won't really have that much time to cook tomorrow so I'm thinking I might cook something tonight just so hubby has something to bring for lunch tomorrow and he has something to eat for dinner when I'm at class. Hubby and I normally don't drink on weeknights anymore, maybe on a Friday, but it's Tuesday today. I am so nervous though about the Leaf game that um, I made myself a little drink. It's just half an ounce of gin, so very, very light. It's basically a gin and tonic. I love our martini glasses. I wish I could remember where I got these from because they are the ideal martini glass. There's no name on the stem or anything like that. I have a feeling they are really inexpensive, maybe like even anchor hawking. They're not too heavy, not too light. The glass isn't too thick or too thin. The best part though is that the lip is very comfortable to drink from. Some glassware, the lip is too thin and it kind of pokes you in the mouth, but this one just has the perfect shape and the perfect thickness to drink from. And of course it doesn't have to be an alcoholic drink, you could very easily just drink anything in this glass, but the way the liquid falls into your mouth I find is perfect. Cheers to the leaves. Nah. That's really good. I didn't end up taking a nap today. Instead, I was very productive and I did a bunch of chores. I did a couple of loads of laundry, changed the bed sheets, put everything away. And then I went ahead and made the lasagna for tomorrow. And as well, I roasted three zucchinis and a whole bunch of garlic. Truffle's been loving my meditation cushion lately. Every time I get up to go somewhere, he jumps on the cushion and he lies there or he like starts licking it and then he lies down. So he's resting on there right now and hubby is petting him. Good morning everyone, it is a new day and I didn't come back on yesterday because the leaves lost and I just basically went to bed after that. I did end up sleeping in a little bit today. I pressed snooze but I consciously pressed snooze because today is going to 
be a bit of a longer day. I have a friend coming over and then I'm going to head to that writing class. I knew that it would be difficult to find some time to nap today so I decided just to snooze a little while longer and I felt pretty good about my decision. I have been very productive since waking up. I did my yoga. I kind of quasi meditated in bed again but I didn't do my self-development. I actually haven't even been on the computer yet. Instead this morning what I did was I baked. I baked banana bread and I baked some um, the pumpkin spice mini loaves. The pumpkin spice loaves turned out well in the banana bread. I used one extra banana and I think it was too much because it kind of sunk in the middle. It's not as puffy as it normally is. It actually isn't puffy at all. It sunk. But um, it's kind of my mood right now. I was pretty bummed that the leaves lost and I fully recognize it is pretty ridiculous that I get this bummed over this sort of thing but it is what it is and um i'll move on as i always do after i finished baking i basically cleaned i did the full gamut i cleaned the kitchen i cleaned the bathroom i vacuumed i wiped down the floors i wiped down some of the walls i took out the garbage so i did all of that stuff and it feels great and it now takes only a fraction of time that it used to take because our place is overall pretty tidy. I try to put things away as soon as I can. It's a lot easier to clean now that we've comrade the condo. I haven't put on any jewelry or anything like that today. Um, maybe I'll go put on some earrings now. So I've decided to put on these oversized stud earrings. I hope you can see them properly. I may take them off though before I head to writing class. If I wear my AirPods, they kind of get caught over here. I've tried it before and I had to remove the earrings. I have another pair that are a lighter kind of seashell color and I really love those as well. I've worn those several times but I just didn't get a really good photo of it. Hubby and I actually haven't been eating a whole lot of pasta and such this month. We gravitate more towards um, lentils and beans, legumes, that sort of thing but I did decide to make the lasagna because it was quick and easy and I had all of the ingredients. End up using my last jar of spaghetti sauce or pasta sauce. I'm planning not to buy any more of it. Instead, I'm just gonna make a sauce from scratch, either just using tomatoes. I can use canned tomatoes, but I just want to cut out the pre-made sauces that you kind of just heat up. I do have an end goal in mind, which is to eventually cut out all of that processed kind of prepared food all together. Am I still gonna have a store-bought cookie every once in a while like from a bakery or am I gonna have a Timmy's donut every once in a while? Yes, probably because I'm not about absolutes and I'm definitely not that extreme when it comes to habit change because I feel like I know myself well enough to know how to set up a habit for me to succeed and I've been doing it for so long that I've of course failed at a lot of things and I've succeeded at a lot of things and gradually I've been able to shift my habit formation in a way that increases the probability of success rather than putting all these very restrictive rules in and trying for like a day or two and then deciding I can't do this which is fine in its own way because then you know that it's not something you wanted to achieve and it's not something that you're ready to commit to achieving but at the same time because I know myself pretty well now and I know how to set up a habit for success why not try to do that instead of overshooting and then failing and learning from that but then having to backtrack and reset the habit anyway. The no processed junk food challenge has been very very easy. All I do is I don't buy the junk food and if I don't have it in the condo I don't eat it. There are a lot of things in this food area that I want to tackle but I want to tackle them piece by piece and piecemeal and I think I will get there but it's probably going to take months if not years of doing these little experiments very similar to my morning routine so if you follow my goals videos on petite pear style you'll know that I've worked up to a morning routine like the one that I posted um, a few days ago I was never a morning person I never made the bed I didn't dry brush I didn't oil pull I 
I didn't exercise in the morning, I didn't meditate. There were a lot of things in that video that I showed that I didn't do and I had no interest in doing. I had no interest in oil pulling or meditating or dry brushing until I started feeling a lot of stress and realizing that I had to make changes and I started making gradual changes, gradual shifts, little nudges in the right direction. And eventually I built up over decades this morning routine that I have now, which spans about two to three hours. And I feel it's a very healthy and fulfilling morning routine. It's not for everyone, of course. Not everyone wants to have a two to three hour morning routine, but for me, it really grounds me and centers me and sets me up for success for the day. But that didn't happen overnight and it didn't happen after one 30 day challenge. It happened over multiple 30 day challenges and multiple experiments and trying different things and realizing they weren't for me. For example, guided meditations are something that never really spoke to me. I prefer Vipassana. Food is such a huge topic. There are so many opinions and so much research on food that it's going to take me a while to come up with this ideal for my life. And maybe the end picture is more of an 80-20 split where I eat healthy 80% of the time and I have treats 20% of the time or maybe I can shift it even more to like a 90-10 or a 95-5. It's not going to be cut and dry. For example, I have my morning routine but I don't do that every single morning. I do that morning routine most mornings but I still give myself a little leeway because it's all about having the bigger picture in mind, being gentle with yourself, being kind to yourself and trying your best in the moment. I'm just sharing my journey and hopefully you'll be able to make the changes in your life that you want, not necessarily duplicating what I've done, but maybe looking at how I've tried so many things in the past and maybe fallen back on some and succeeded on others. Trying to craft that for yourself if you are in the mindset that you want to improve something in your life. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts this morning and just thinking a lot. I'm in my own head today quite a bit, but it's good. Reflection is good. That is going to be it for update number four. By the time I do update number five, I will be done this challenge. I'm actually not sure what I want to do for May. I may go challenge free in May. Not to say that I won't be working on something because I always am working towards something, but I may not have um, any firm rules in place or any official challenge in place. I'll just be working day to day towards something but not really tracking it or measuring it. Hubby and I are heading to Niagara on the Lake at the end of the week. We're only going for one night so I'll have a really short kind of like travel vlog. That's something I'm very much looking forward to. I am not huge on traveling right now because I feel like it's more of a disruption because there's so much I want to get done in Toronto. We love spending time with our pets Truffle's getting up there in age. I've talked about this in a lot of videos. He's starting to um, fall into really deep sleeps. Like he is so relaxed now. He doesn't have that same heightened prey sense of awareness that he used to because he's getting older. So he's kind of relaxing more and letting his guard down more. So what he does now is he falls into a deep slumber, just like sitting up like in a little ball shape. And then he kind of like falls over. So if he's sitting on my meditation pillow, which he's really been loving, he'll like topple over and fall onto the ground. So he's done that a few times now. So we know he's, you know, getting up there in age. So I don't really feel comfortable leaving him for a week or two. A week would maybe be the max right about now. I'm finding it tough to... To leave him because he is my little baby. I love him so much. Hey everyone, I just got home from writing class. It's around 9 p.m. and I thought I would do a little outro here because 
I had closed off the video earlier, but I think you could really tell that I was in a bit of a mood. I was in quite a funk most of the day because of the leaves. Even though I busied myself, it wasn't enough until I actually went and interacted with people. I had a friend over and we had a really nice long chat. I made the goat cheese appetizer for her and we just caught up. And then I went to the writing class and the writing class was what I wanted to talk about. It was amazing. Sometimes the classes at the library are hit or miss, but this one was run by a writing studio called Firefly. They're located on the Danforth and they normally have paid workshops. My friend was telling me that all classes at the library have to be free, they can't charge for them. So this was a absolutely free course that you would normally pay think quite a bit for and the instructor was amazing she took us through writing prompts we were given six minutes to write a little something based on the prompts and then we would go around and share our stories we would just read them out loud and then we would receive feedback the feedback was all very positive and she gave us descriptive words that we could use to provide feedback to one another in a really positive way I just found that everyone in the class was very thoughtful, their writing was very good, they were very open to sharing and they were very kind and compassionate. I loved the time that we got in class to write on the spot. It was um, very, very, very helpful. My writing of course needs a lot of work but um, it was fun to share and to get feedback and to provide others with feedback. It was just a really nice experience. So I'm very much looking forward to the next class even though I do still have a bit of anxiety and a bit of fear in the pit of my stomach. It feels good to get out there even though it is scary. It was just a great first class. There are five classes in the series and they're once a week. I will link it down below. It does fill up really quickly because there are only 12 spots available. I'll also put the link to Firefly down below in case you want to check out what other workshops they have. That is going to be it for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a bit rambly. I will see you guys all very soon with another video. I hope you're doing very well. Bye.